Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and I think you're really going to enjoy this. This is a chat with Mark Champion. He is a photographer. He's a really great photographer, and that's how I became friends with him. I started to see his stuff on Instagram and follow him, and we started chatting and talking about photography and his love for baseball and barbecue, and it just kind of went from there, and we've been wanting to talk for a while, and it's, this seemed like the perfect time. And, and, and over the course of the next few months, I'm going to be talking to a lot of photographers, a lot of barbecue photographers, because I feel that barbecue lends itself really well to photography. Of course it does, and a lot of these photographers you may or may not have heard of, and I want you to follow them and check them out and see what they're doing, and then also see the other stuff that's other than barbecue. So we get into his photography and, and what he uses, his tools, his gear, but we mostly get into his background and his love for barbecue and his love for Texas. He grew up in Corpus Christi, and we talk about what it's like there, and then he moved to Houston. He works in the refinery business, and we talk about that. But one barbecue joint in particular this barbecue joint that's no longer there that I think you'll really enjoy the conversation about and he describes it. And then we get into some barbecue joints that are around right now, some ones off the beaten path. We talk about Butters, which is one that if you're in Mathis, or you should make the drive out to Mathis, Butters is definitely a place you should stop at. But I can't thank Mark enough for taking the time. I thoroughly enjoyed editing this because it was a, such a, an enjoyable conversation and I know you guys are really going to like it and want to check out more of what Mark does. I'll put his, his contact and websites below as well as his Instagram so that way you can follow him. But mainly if you type in Mark Champion Texas or Mark Champion TX, you can find out what he's doing. And the Kevin's Barbecue Joints YouTube show and podcast has two sponsors. We have Centex Smokers, which you guys know is Centex underscore Smokers on Instagram. Give him a follow, check out what he's doing. I have to reiterate, he's 12 to 14 months out now. I've been saying four to five months for a long time and then Michael's like hey I'm actually 12 to 14 months out so if you want to place an order with him if you look at his Instagram you'll want to place an order with him his craftsmanship is exquisite you better get in line because he's starting to go, get further out so make sure you do get your spot send him a DM get a quote again that's Centex underscore smokers out of Luling Texas and a new sponsor of the show is Flores Tortillas they're at Flores Tortillas.com the best tortillas I've had one of the best Use a smoked beef tallow in the tortillas. They're wonderful. And I, like I've said, I've sent dozens out to friends. And now he's a sponsor of the show. So I'm honored that he'd want to be a sponsor of the show. Their stuff is so great. Every Monday at 10 a.m. Central Time, Texas Time, they go on sale online at floristortillas.com. They sell out really quickly. Ship them anywhere. You'll make a new best friend. But they're also available. I'll put a link below to an article I wrote about all the retail locations you get them, all a bunch of different barbecue joints that you can get Flores Tortillas in their tacos, or they have a retail case that you could buy them from. So again, that's florestortillas.com, Flores Tortillas on all social media. Check them out, you won't go wrong, you'll love it. And if you're digging these, please subscribe, that way you don't miss out on anything. I have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com. Got a lot of new stuff coming out, a lot of really cool stuff. But at the end, stay safe. Thank you so much for listening and enjoy this. Good evening, Mark. How are you doing? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. I just had a uh, dinner with my family and it's a Monday. What can I say? It's interesting because you meet someone online, <laughs> not like we're a Tinder or something, but like you meet someone online, like social media wise, and you see what they do, but I don't really know you and I don't know how you got to where you're, and I love your photography and I really want to get into that. And I want people to, I'll put links below and, and a companion blog piece to everything that you do, but how did you, are, have you always grown up in Texas? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm from South Texas originally. I'm actually going to start off tonight with a cold Rambler, a beverage right. of choice. This is not sponsored by Rambler, but... Uh, it wouldn't be bad if it was. Smoke. Rambler sparkling water from Austin, Texas. It's delicious. Have you had one? I have not had one, no. And I, and I, I keep seeing them and I'm like, all right. I've obviously, obviously I've had Topo Chico, but uh, Rambler. Okay, cool. Can I, is it something that I can get outside of Texas or is it just in Texas? Yeah, you can order them on Amazon. I think that's a case of four, a case of four or four cases for 20 bucks on Amazon. That's not bad at all. Okay. I'll check it out. I'll I'll check it out right after. Remind me if I don't, because that's cool. Because yeah, I'm always looking for something refreshing and especially to Texas. Texas, LA gets just as hot. I'm moving to Texas eventually, but LA gets just as hot as Texas. And we <laughs> need on. things. <laughs> Joe, Joe, Joe Rogan did it. Everybody, we're, we're welcoming everybody. Come yeah, no, I, I guess so. I'm not as a, you know, it's funny is because I live above a Morton Steakhouse. Like I don't live anywhere fancy, but there's a, a Morton Steakhouse below. And so that he used to come to that steakhouse a lot. Like he, like Dr. Dre would go like weird random wow. Like the Kardashians, it was the stupid weirdest thing. Like, and then normal people. But uh, Joe Rogan would come every so often, and I'm like, oh, I should talk to him. I should ask him if he wants to be my show. And it was too late. Like, COVID, <laughs> COVID happened. But I was like, like people were like, who is? I'm like, that's Joe Rogan. You know, 
because he looks different in pub, like in person. Like he's just um, yeah, talky. Sure. And, he's a lot bigger in person. Yeah, like and yeah, I think also too. What's the um uh? There's a guy, a wrestler that like is on everything now, and he would think he's in the new Suicide Squad. I'm trying like so off John topic. Cena? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to go there. A lot but it's too. it's funny you say that. Like people being bigger in person. I met uh Stone Cold Steve Austin at a Papacitos in San Antonio. Oh. In 2007, and um, in person, he's he's humongous. He's like, you know, he's just built like a Ford truck. He's just ginormous. He's from South Texas, also. Oh wow! So like seeing him out in the wild, like seeing him like at a it's, restaurant or something like that, it's just like seeing a rare like. Yeah. You're you're, you're, you're starstruck, you know, it's Stone Cold. I mean, it's for a, sure. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's what's funny is, is I don't always get starstruck, but like there's certain people like that. I would I would totally yeah. and I was my roommate in college was a huge Rams fan, like from the back in the day and all the all the moves and stuff. And so we were at a I think a Chili's or something like we were because he loved Chili's. And so we my, my roommate and so we went to Chili's and uh there was a guy, I think he was like a punter for the Rams. Okay. And he had a he had a ring, he had a, a Super Bowl ring, and he took it off and gave it to and his it was like three, two or three fingers could fit course, his hand. Course, he was yeah. such a big dude <laughs> and just a yeah. puncher. Yeah, it's just wild. It but is yeah, to, to answer your, your question from before, yeah, yeah I'm from sorry. the West, Texas originally, uh born and raised in Corpus. My wife and I moved, or Corpus Christi, my wife and I moved to Houston in 2011, and we've been here almost 10 years now. Well, actually, okay. I'm sorry, 2012. So next April will yeah. be 10 years. So it's time's kind of flown by. What was that like living in Corpus? And did, when you moved to, to Houston, was it like moving to the big city kind of like moving to? to yeah, the- it was more of like a, uh, it was super challenging. I never liked Houston. Um, you know, growing up, we, my friends and I would come to Houston to hang out and, you know, go places and party and, you know, hang out with other friends. But I was always intimidated because it's the big city, it's traffic. Mm-hmm. You know, compared to LA traffic, Houston owns LA all day, and people might think I'm crazy, but Houston. No, traffic- I've, heard, I've heard that. Yeah, no, I, I, I haven't been to Houston. I've been to Austin, Dallas here, but I haven't. Been yeah, it, it's it, it's a, it's good. It definitely got its days, but we live in the suburbs, and we try to stick to our corner. And usually, if we do go into Houston, like the actual like proper Houston, it's mostly for barbecue. So yeah, so it's yeah. worth it's. You understand that you're going to be dealing with traffic. Exactly, and- exactly. And we'll leave at certain times to be traffic and stuff like that. But we were actually just just in Corpus this past weekend. And I got to see my grandma and my mother-in-law and uh, a couple of friends. So that was always a good time. Oh, that's nice. And, and is, what is Corpus like? Is it like a slower a, pace? Is it a better pace? Um, it's definitely slower pace. It's a, a seaside town. There is a uh, Ocean Drive, which is like the main attraction in Corpus. Um, are you familiar with Selena? Mm-hmm. Okay, Selena's from there. Oh, okay. my, wife, I, my wife actually uh, is from Selena's neighborhood um, there oh, in Molina. Yeah, yeah. So like when Selena passed away, my wife was walking home from school that day, and it uh, was chaos. Oh, I'm sure um, it was just so it's, tra- traumatic. Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also the home of Whataburger. Oh, really? <laughs> which I take a lot of pride in. Um, so that's where the first Whataburger was in Corpus. It was off of yeah. It's off of I believe the first one was off Airs across from Del- Delmar College. It's not there anymore. But yeah. uh, a lot of people think of the Waterburger downtown now as the original one and it's a two-story Waterburger. it overlooks the water so everyone's like oh yeah i went to corpus i went to the original one i'm like no you didn't you no, went you to did, the yeah. fancy two-story one but yeah so, corpus- so is it is it a place that people go for spring break to or, or is that more definitely definitely okay. there's beaches there uh you have south padre right there over oh, the south Padre. okay that is you've got, yeah. a, you've got a downtown scene you've got a great sushi scene um the live music scene is really great there's house of rock there's a lot of places there to hang out and have a good time it's like a um i might even say it's like a mini santa monica in a sense oh wow those places yeah so would you recommend going if someone was like this is a travel show now if if, i guess sort of oh it's barbecue (laughs) uh, and baseball or whatever Uh, but it's uh, would you recommend going off season like is it a better experience you think you'd have or I would, I would definitely recommend Corpus in the summertime so you can experience the beach. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely peak season. If you're going to go visit Corpus, you should definitely do it like in yeah. the summertime. And for the geographically uh, right. uninclined, the uninclined that's, of- that's the Gulf of Mexico, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. The Gulf's right there, and it's yeah. just, it's super, it's beautiful. you got Port Aransas. You've got uh, all the area of the east side. It's, it's, it's really nice. That's cool. So w- when you were there, did you have, bar- were you into barbecue at all or into photography? So... I would say, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure I was, if I can remember right. Um, I, I grew up, my, my dad taught me how to barbecue early on. He taught me how to grill. You know, he taught me indirect heat, direct heat. He taught me, you know, um, 
oh. all the fundamentals. But the one thing my dad never taught me was how to smoke. So um, growing up, we had um, Corpus is the bigger city, and there's a little town next to Corpus called Robstown. Okay. And it's where Texas Hold'em came from. <laughs> oh, interesting. Which is, which is a pretty cool fact. So, like, that's a very I cool fact. Like, yeah. So, like, Robstown had Texas Hold'em, but it also had this really unique barbecue place called Joe Cotton's Barbecue. And if you're, you know, true Texas barbecue lover, you'll know about Joe Cotton's. I know Daniel Vaughn's uh, talked about him, uh, talked about Joe Cotton's on uh, Texas Monthly before. But Joe Cotton's was this place that it was like if a, if it was like the King Ranch did barbecue. It was a, a Bucketto's dream. You walked in, you had all the waiters were in like these white, like a button ups with like bolo ties. Uh, they would serve you on know, white wax paper. Uh, the pickles, onions, and jalapenos were, were raw and they were freshly cut. They would get a whole tomato, slice it up, and give it to you also like that. It was one of those places we went, like my grandma would take us if like we made straight A's or AB honor roll. Or, oh, okay. It was somebody's birthday. We'd go. So, so Joe Cotton's was like that place where if you did good and you didn't get in trouble, you were going to go to Joe Cotton's. And that was like, that was heaven to us. Wow. It was so cool. They give you ice cream at the very end in a cup with a peppermint stick in the middle. Oh, that's, that's I mean, it, touch. It, it what was, like real, what a bunch of really cool touches too. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And you know, it's just one of those places like I remember the the pickles they give you were pickle spears the brisket was always uh, a fatty cut you know it was just always the things that stuck in my head when it came to Texas barbecue I think was implemented very early yeah and it stuck with me and I, a lot a lot, I, a lot of people that I talked to that don't that have that have grown up outside of central Texas that sounds kind of like an interest like has a little bit of central Texas in it. Kind of, that's a, well, yeah. And also a thing in South Texas, uh, I would say South Texas is probably maybe people, people might disagree, but I consider South Texas from San Antonio to Victoria South. So Corpus is right there. And in South Texas, we don't use post oak. We use mesquite. And, you know, a lot of the times if you cook with mesquite, if you're cooking too hard with it, yeah. You're, gonna burp it up. you're gonna you're gonna burp it up later on mm -hmm. so a lot of places in corpus that we eat at after joe cotton's it wasn't the same it was you know they'd use mesquite you'd be you'd be burping it up you'd have indigestion later on um it was one of those things where joe cotton's was the standalone in south texas for corpus for robstown for this whole coastal bend 361 area that was like the place to go to and everybody everybody knew who joe cotton's was um I'm they assuming actually, it does. Does it still exist? And it's no, no. Well, a rendition of it does. So they burned down, I think, in 2009. Oh. Um, the building caught fire, and you can actually go to Google and type in Joe Cotton's Barbecue Fire, and there is a picture there. I want to say of the building on fire, and then the Joe Cotton sign right here. Oh. Yeah, it's 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 a. I, was, I thought you were gonna say, and then you could see me, and I'm like standing with my, with <laughs> no, my, my, my no. grandma, me and my grandma over to the side. So <laughs> uh, I believe it was owned by a certain guy and his brother. The one guy moved to Dallas with his girlfriend, I think, and the brother stuck behind. I think years later, but down the road, they opened up Joe Cot or or Cotton's Catering in Cal Allen. Wow. I haven't tried it. It's I've heard from everybody. It's not the same. It's still good. It's really good, but it's not the same. Interesting. But it's a it's a distant family member, I believe, like a nephew or a grandson that continued it on. Huh. And it's still there in Cal Allen, which is like Cal Allen and Robstown is just a, another part of Houston or Corpus, I'm sorry. So um, so if you never it never got a chance to try it, you never got the chance to try it because it's right, uh, right, yeah. right. Yeah, exactly. So when I meet people who went to Joe Cotton's oh, back that's, in the day, it's kind of like a you know, it's one of those things where <laughs> we're part of a certain club yeah you are we're for sure of, yeah yeah. yeah cool. and actually I, uh tony romo when he was dating jessica simpson um they went in one day and i had no idea because it was on the oh, i they put on the news that night but before we had watched the news we had actually gone to joe cotton's we missed him by like an oh, hour that's or funny so. <laughs> that would be really cool to walk in and see tony roma with you know jessica yeah that's a and that was like a weird slice of time too that, yeah like, yeah he was sure. dating jessica so, simpson that was so bizarre yeah <laughs> but we all, i mean you know and as time went on like you know got into high school and college i never had time to go out to joe cotton's you know i never really had the opportunity to go back i think the last time i went I was probably about 14 and there's places in corpus that, that we go to you know bar, there's a place called barbecue man which is by the re refineries my day job I'm in, I'm in the refineries all day I uh, I manage an inspection crew here at a refinery here in Houston. Okay. Um, 
So back when I was working and living in Corpus, there's always barbecue joints up and down um, over in that area where the refineries are. So, the, so do you, did you move to Houston for that job? Yeah, yeah. I moved to Houston in 2012. Um, I had the opportunity to come over here and uh, the same company I'm with now. And at the time, she was my girlfriend. I asked her and I said, do you want to move with me? And she's like, yeah, sure. So we came over here and Years later, we got married, had a kid, bought a house, you know, now we're doing our barbecue thing. <laughs> wow, no, that's, yeah. <laughs> but now yeah. is that, you don't do, you oversee, do you oversee welders and things or is, is it, how yeah, is, yeah, I, I, I oversee welders, I'll check their welds um, and stuff like that, so it's, um, seeing like comp- people like moberg and Millscale and yeah i was gonna say them, like you know, they're they're posting pictures of their welds i'm like okay that's a nice weld you know <laughs> so um, you know like if you see something you can tell a good i weld. can tell okay. if it's got slag or undercut or porosity i'm like mm. but most of the time all those guys are you know a, you know top of the line when it comes to being you know fab welders so yeah i would it, never it, think you're gonna post anything subpar yeah, you'd hope you'd hope so, but I'm sure some like some of the up and comers, you know, they probably post a lot of stuff, not quite yeah. knowing, and then but then they probably look back and go, just like the barbecue guys, like they look back and go, I can't believe I showed that. Exactly. Wow. Like, what the, the same thing. Yeah, the same thing goes for my photography. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was gonna say I, that too. Yeah, I've gone back and I've seen pictures I've shared, and I'm like, I cringe, you know. Or <laughs> what I what I do now is I was actually talking to a buddy of mine on Friday about it is I'll go back to pictures I was editing in 2014, 2015. I'll, I'll get rid of all those edits and I'll re-edit old photos I took. Oh, wow. Which is kind of weird, I guess, but it's, um, it's kind of aesthetically pleasing. Mm-hmm. You know, you see an old photo you took of a baseball or some, you know, a, a game or something, and you go back and you just completely re-edit it because I think your artistic skills and your creative integrity has kind of progressed over time. And you, know, you weren't the same, you know, shooter yeah. you were, you know, years ago. You weren't the same pit master you were you know three or four years ago and your so. style your style changes too or your or you create your exactly. own style like something aesthetic something aesthetically pleasing to you to look at and then hopefully other people agree yeah. with that yeah for sure big time yeah because sometimes like i i am ze- not, no photographer at all like i <laughs> i try my best but i but i do sometimes like i'll i'll have a photo and i'll see it and i know it's maybe not perfectly photo, but i love the photo i'm like screw it i'll put it off i don't okay. yeah like, yeah and I, what does it matter so. <laughs> yeah and you know and it, bar- photography is a lot like barbecue it's subjective yeah you know i might think this picture is awesome and somebody else might think it's too dark or it's you know it's too hard in the exposure. You edit it too too hard, you know. But um, I think it's just all in the the eye of the beholder type yeah. thing. And you can yeah. tell when you look at cer- certain photographers what they're tweaking, like what they're doing. Like there's certain yeah, ones. yeah. There's certain people out there posting photos that just blast every color in the world and <laughs> just looks like you know, like yeah. I'm gonna make this look like you know mm-hmm. poppy. And I'm like, okay, that that's a, that's your style, you know. And everyone's yeah, yeah. got their own thing. Mm-hmm. So. And there, yeah, and that's cool. And I'm putting together like I mentioned that piece on photographers, and they're all so unique and. The yeah. responses too were so awesome. Like it's such an interesting response. How, that how so photography? You weren't into. Were you into that down south, or were you? Did you get into that when you were in Houston? So my clothing brand Ninth Inning, I started in two thousand at the end of two thousand twelve when I moved to Houston. It's kind of like when we moved here, my imagination just my blinders just came off, and I I got a whole new vision for what I wanted to do. I started a clothing brand called Ninth Inning, which is basically yeah. uh, it glorifies um, baseball, baseball yeah. aesthetics. Um, and I turned it into a clothing brand. We'd make caps, we'd make t-shirts, hoodies, um, pennants, glasses, anything you could think of we were making. It went strong for a solid five years. And at the beginning of that, I said, you know what? I need to invest in a camera to shoot product, to shoot models, to shoot anything I need for my social media. And that's where it came up. I bought a Sony A5100 from Best Buy. I I believe it was Sony's first mirrorless camera. And I went in there, I was going to buy something else. I forgot what it was. And I saw it and I said, wow, this is a really cool camera. It was basically Sony's answer to the DSLRs. It was mirrorless. It was compact. It was small. It would fit like in a bag or even your pocket or a hoodie pocket or something. So I got familiar with that right away. And what started out as a hobby just kind of turned and progressed over the years and it just it blossomed from there it was kind of a an organic you know thing that just came about i stopped doing ninth inning in 2018 and after that my photography just completely just ran so ninth inning does that exist or is it just in like special things that you guys do for it sometimes it's on it's on the i'm gonna say this it's on the injured list it's on the injured list it's it's getting it's, it's it's getting better but 
Can you still buy any product from me? No, I have no product left. <laughs> yeah, because I was looking because I was trying to. I'm like, it's, yeah, I'm, I've I'm got like no, being I've, like I like poking it. I'm like, it's not working. <laughs> I've got no product left. The website's still up. You can go and see what we've got. You know, as far as our our promo and stuff like that, our story. Um, I have a blog on there too. I haven't updated in a while, but um, ninetheinningtx.com. Um, it was very very fun. It was very demanding. It's one of those things that I did that I I devoted 100 percent of my time to. I will get home from work and I'll come straight to the office and I'd spend four or five hours here. And my daughter at the time was, you know, she was an infant, she was one, she was growing up and I was missing out a lot on that. And I had a problem with kind of um, prioritizing and juggling my time when it came to that. Yeah, it really is, it really is. And um, I kind of stepped back, I said, you know what? I can pick up ninth inning here soon. I wanna watch, be more, you know, watch my daughter grow up more and pay more attention to her. You know, I felt like, I really didn't feel like a bad father. I just felt like, you know, I was, just not being, you know, you had a realization, that, oh, be, yeah. you know, but now with, with, were you, were you, it seems like you're, you're really interested in a certain type of, like you love baseball, but it seems like that same lot, that kind of that, do you like that kind of base? Is that, is that your so, passion? So I, I, I never wanted it to be like a corny, cheesy, um, I'm going to put a bat and a ball in a t-shirt type thing. That's never what we did. Yeah. We did things that were, that really um, were different in a sense that our designs were very original, very different. Um, I never really copied anybody as far as what I saw in the big brand stores. Um, I always did my own thing, but I always had a Texas aesthetic. I always included a Texas aesthetic, no matter what it was, there was always gonna be something to do with, it was very gritty, you know, it was very uh, kind of just rugged and rough. I'm trying to look for something around here that's ninth inning. But um, you could send me thing. you could send me some photos too, and I could pop this is, them. Uh, this is Hamilton. Yeah, this is our original lo- original design. This is Hamilton Porter. Uh, That's this cool. guy named Edgar from the Valley. He works for Rebel Eight now. He created this guy. I just random random little pop head here. <laughs> Pretty cool. But yeah, we took we took kind of those old uh, vintage aesthetics and designs and typography, and we brought that to life in a brand like Ninth Inning. And our first year in business, we got the attention of the MLB. Um, the Astros gave us a call. They were like, hey, come out, talk to us. Oh, wow. Talk to our design. But yeah, we, you know, we, we went out there. I went out there and I That's met with crazy. their designers. I got to talk to all of them, their promo team and all that good stuff. Um, created a partnership with them, created a, a you know, good friendship with those guys. And I still keep up with them to this day. Oh, that's um, interesting. But you still have, you still have a strong passion for baseball, right? It's, it's still there. You know, I mean, my daughter's named after a baseball player. Her name's Maris after Roger Maris. Nice. I've got, I've got two wiener dogs, Ken Griffey Wiener and Yogi Barca. <laughs> I mean, baseball, my wife met me. She knew baseball was part of the deal. And, you know, can you, can you uh, talk about a little bit about Ken Griffey Jr. swing? Can you, like how um, beautiful it was like one it, of the most beautiful. Yeah. Things I mean, I'm sure you can see up here. I've got, this is almost the top two rows are, are Griffey's are, is Griffey member Billy. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. So, I mean, I've got stuff. Nice. I've got stuff from before I was born. I've got stuff. I've, I've been collecting I kid you not, kid. I've been collecting probably since I was about four years old. Um, there was a baseball card shop in Corpus called the Dugout, and that was where I'd spend all my time. You know, report card money allowance. I was always buying baseball stuff. I got to see Grippy play one time in Arlington, and he hit a home run. Oh, nice! And I'll never forget that. Oh, and I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I still think to this day he made eye contact with me. Of course he did. Um, I, I, it's a funny story. I don't know if you want to get into it, but I, sure. I saw him hit the home run in Arlington and I was, you know, 10 years old and I was just starstruck. And it is sad he never got a ring. You know, he never got a World Series ring, but he's going to, he made baseball fun. Mm-hmm. And he made baseball very, um, just, he gave it a new life. He, when he came around in the, in the late 80s, early 90s, he yeah. kind of gave it a new, just a new take, you know, and everybody yeah. he just turned his hat backwards and he started, you know, swinging the way he did. And that was it. And it's just the rest is history. And, yeah. And it just, it just felt so natural. And it, I never got to see him. I actually, I was <laughs> sending my friend links to Bo Jackson stuff recently oh, because, yeah. uh, and I was, uh, cause I, I saw Bo play in, in Anaheim once. And okay. I, uh, I remember. Was he, with, was he with the Royals? He was with the Royals. Yeah. And I remember I was summer, I was walking summer. I missed his, I don't know how I missed his, about, or maybe I was stuck buying a hot dog but i could hear you could hear it was quiet you could hear him strike out that's how 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 loud the sound was with it like he was so strong in the air yeah i was i'm always i'll always remember the fact that i could hear him strike out which i it's such a bizarre yeah. thing to even think yeah, i didn't Bo see jackson. him break i didn't see him break the bat on his helmet or anything Bo but. jackson was uh one of those players that that you'll never get another Bo jackson ever. Never. he was a, he was just a 
beast and everything he did. He would hose the ball from the outfield and just gun guys out at third yeah. base, like like Thor. He would just, you know, it was like nothing. Yeah, it was like just, Thor, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it was almost like godlike. So. And in football, like people, like there'd be many guys on him and he'd be, yeah. he just, yeah. I luckily, like this is off topic too, but you I don't, meant to. Yeah, you, you don't know. see two way players anymore these days. Uh, uh, Russell anymore. Wilson, actually, I'm a Rangers fan. So Russell Wilson, the, the Seattle uh, Seahawks quarterback, yeah, yeah. was. He was part of the Rangers like oh, arms for a while. Yeah, it was so weird. A lot of those guys can they're like they play in multiple sports. Like I just I'm posting an interview with Nick Mangold from the Jets. He has a barbecue sauce. And so oh, I talked awesome. to him. I'm posting that tonight. And uh he uh I know that he he played like he had, his mom made him play sports. They so they play baseball and basketball, but in football stuck, and that was the one. But it's funny, a lot of those guys probably have the ability to play, but that was such like a 80s thing to do yeah like you don't see that you don't see that nowadays you know which is crazy no well let's let's jump to more to, to barbecue and photography um so what as your th- as things progress what are you shooting with now like it's an a what it's a Sony. so i so i i, I recently upgraded um last november i got an a, a sony a7c yeah. their new uh, mirrorless they put out in the fall mm-hmm. um i picked that up in a 54 millimeter i believe 1.8 and I shoot with those now. How do you um, like that? I love it. I love it. I actually, I actually, yeah, I got a wide angle lens at the beginning and I was shooting with that. I did a couple of jobs with that and I couldn't really, uh, I was so used to shooting with portrait lenses because that's just my style. I shoot portraits, you know, mm-hmm. um, and I got a hold of a wide angle. I started shooting with that and it's great for things like food, the occasional product, but uh, I was just so used to shooting with the 50 millimeter for years and years. And that's kind of how I learned was with the 50 millimeter. And when I started shooting barbecue with the 50 millimeter, it's not, I was kind of breaking the rules because it just unheard of who's going to shoot food with a portrait lens, you know? And yeah. I did it. I broke, I just, I kind of did my own thing and I, I didn't really pay attention to any of the rules or any of that stuff. So upgraded and I'm still shooting with the portrait lens now, just a, a faster one, but yeah, still Sony. Can you, still. Can you explain to, to, to someone that doesn't know what a portrait lens is, but what makes it different? So the portrait lens is going to be more of center focus. You're going to have the 1.4 aperture to a 1.8. That's where you want to focus on more, more, you know, shallow field. Um, of course, mine, I think mine gets up to 22, but for the most part, I shoot, I shoot pretty low um, 1.4, 1.8 in that area. But a wide angle lens is more based towards landscape, mm-hmm. more based towards um, street photography, more based towards food photography um stuff like that so that was never really i mean i love street photography i've, I've done it before it's, it's fun um i want to get better at landscape i did, actually just went to big bend recently oh did you yeah it was beautiful i think i took the best photo of my life there i shot with a portrait lens <laughs> which is hilarious but um are you shooting yeah. with a tripod no no yeah. no I, I i told myself i have a tripod i never use it when i do headshots for companies i'll, I'll take the tripod and stuff yeah. like that I told myself when I start getting into landscape photography, I'll invest in another tripod. It's probably a lot better than one like that. But. Have you ever have you ever rented a medium format? No. Yeah, I'm curious. I think like somehow on YouTube, it's it's all like a medium format, like little yeah. trend, like it keeps up. So like yeah. Hustle oh, yeah. Blot, yeah. Hustle Blot, and like these yeah. Fuji yeah, films, either. and I'm looking. I must have been searching for something, and I I'll watch videos, and I'm like, it's the 5700R cameras, yeah, and it's just insane. a body alone. But it, yeah. but it is interesting how like with all the mega was it pixel all the pixels it's just amazing right yeah. right right and i i think i'm also kind of timid to jump over into like landscape photography just because there's there's you know there's photographers especially in my area that are just killing it with landscape photography i mean you know ben sasani yeah he just made the cover of, i think austin was an austin monthly yeah that was from a photo from like a year wasn't that one like when he went to big ben right i think so yeah his kids on top of his pool yeah it's so cover. beautiful that's a gorgeous Ben's like yeah it's a funny story. We were at a koi pop up not long ago, and a buddy of Ben's was there, and we're chit chatting, whatever. And I had my camera out, and I was sta- I was standing next to Joey Garcia, a good old boy, and we're hanging out, and you know, we're getting our barbecue. He's he's great. <laughs> oh yeah, Joey's Joey's the man. He's got a great eye. It's not a great. Yeah, guy. he does. He really does. And we're getting our barbecue and stuff, and the buddy of Ben's is there, and he goes, "So are you a photographer?" And I'm like, "I can't say that in front of Ben." <laughs> no and ben's like dude chill out like come on come on i'm like i can't like i can't say i'm a photographer in front of ben ben's ben's one of the best you know mm-hmm. it's, it's very uh well also didn't didn't ben, didn't ben like rent a helicopter for new york or something like who knows yeah ben's, like, ben's, <laughs> ben's, ben's a place it's yeah, wild no yeah but it's like it's 
but that's what's so exciting about what, what's fun about photography and i'm just dabbling but it's i'm so interested in it because it, it is it's subjective but there's so much you can do with it and once you take a picture that really means something to you then you just want to take more and you want to try to it's right, it fun right. it's, it's, it's addictive and you always try, yeah you always try to replicate that one you know raw raw photo off the camera you know you're looking at it and you automatically know that's the one. Uh, I did a shoot this past Saturday down in Corpus, and I probably had that's the one photo about 25 <laughs> times. And I just kept on, I had the right light, everything was perfect. Um, and I just kept on trying to replicate that one photo, and it came out great. So that is your other business too. You do photography. Yeah. Like for, yeah do photography. And so explain, explain that business so people know what it is. So I have a website called markchampiontx.com. Uh, and people can reach me on there. They can email me at howdy, Mark Ch at howdy at markchampiontx.com and book me for shoots here in Houston. And I have a, I have a slogan I started called we'll travel for, for a uh, baseball and barbecue. And it's true. I will travel because I've been doing it a lot recently the past couple weekends. We'll go down. And it's not really, you know, I'm not going down to these barbecue joints and telling them, hey, you're going to pay me for my photos. I go down there because I want to go. I wanna yeah, go. yeah, it seems like it. Yeah. And I make friends with them. And usually I know, I know who they are. They know me and they'll let me in the pit room or I'll hang out with them for a while and shoot. And usually I take my daughter and my wife will go and we'll go we'll make it a big thing, you know, kind of like a family vacation. Yeah, yeah. In this, uh, this piece that I'm working on a photographers, I interview, I interview her a question, I get questions back, answers back from uh, Wyatt McSpadden and, you know, Wyatt oh, McSpadden, yeah. like he's, and, it, and it's interesting because he, because I asked for advice and at the very end, he does say like, this is a restaurant, like kind of like, like he gives, like they have their space, like make sure that you, like it was, it's, it was interesting advice from like a, a sage, sage advice Wyatt, from someone that it's Wyatt, like, this is Wyatt, their job. Yeah. Like just don't, don't mess with them. Like don't the, get in their way. He's the OG oh. of all this. He's uh he wrote the book literally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Both two books. <laughs> two books. Yeah, two books. He and he's in a new book. book. I actually, I think I'm receiving it in a couple of days. There's like, he has some photos in it, but it's, yeah, he's, it's just, but it's unique too, because I feel like Texas, lends itself to great photography especially just oh, yeah. the, the landscape the photo the, um, the the restaurants the buildings there's uh, california has a lot there's a lot of you go outside of los angeles but it's right we have we have the coast we have the water with the flatlands with the hill country we have mountains we have we have everything here uh um, yeah. cold weather we have a lot of hot weather we have you know the wildlife it's it's great yeah so so recently you went to butters right yeah yeah i was there a couple days ago yeah how was that it's it's funny. I used I used to go to his dad's taco joint when I was a kid. And you can read this story in the blog because I I did. I read, you read my story. Yeah, you I did. Story I read it today. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I read it. <laughs> MarkChampionTX.com/scorebook, and that's kind of my uh, my okay. journal to baseball yeah. and barbecue travels in Texas. And I wish I would have started it like years ago, like when I was like documenting all this stuff. Yeah, I wish, I wish you would. would. And I was thinking about backlogging a lot of it, and my wife's like, "Well, if you do if you backlog one, you gotta do them all." I'm like. No, yeah. <laughs> it's hard it's a lot of it's an effort a lot of effort. Yeah, but, but a lot i didn't effort. realize that his father would, had a taco or had a restaurant that you had right so um my dad and i which would, would go fishing on weekends and we'd stop in at sotos tacos and we'd go to sotos tacos which is in mathis and you know these tacos were were so big they were just i mean all you needed was one you didn't go in there and order you know two or three they were so large and I was a big kid when I was, you know, I mean, yeah, I played baseball. I had, you know, I was a little chunky kid, you know, so I'd always get a big red and a carne gisada or a potato egg and bean or chorizo and egg. And that was just, Sotos was like the spot, you know, the homemade tortillas. I, didn't uh, the know eggs were I, I interviewed fresh. him. I don't think he mentioned it at all. It was just, it was, it was so good. And I met Andrew uh, last year um, at Brett's backyard, I think two year anniversary and we're there hanging out, and Andrew is sharing a table with with Blake. Last Blake Stoker? Blake, yeah, Blake Stoker um, and Brian Bingham. And they're sharing a table, and they're slinging. I think Blake was doing his um, pimento cheese and crackers. Uh, for, uh, Andrew, Brian was doing a sausage. I'm sure. Of like the most clever the most clever sausage. You yeah, can, yeah, he's yeah. doing like a Dorito sausage, I mean, like crazy yeah, sausage. He's yeah. a cute sausage. And then Andrew was doing barbacoa, and I'm talking to Andrew and we we just start you know chit-chatting and he's i was like man i used, I used to go to mathis when i was a kid and he, at this place called sotos he's like really and i was like yeah he goes my dad's spot and i was like what and he's like yeah oh wow you didn't even tie it together huh? yeah i'm like dude are you i started freaking out i'm like whoa this is crazy <laughs> like so ever since then you know i make it a point to go down there and before i actually met him we had eaten at butters the previous december 
uh, but right before COVID hit, we had went for my first time and it was amazing at that time. And then now every time we go down to Corpus or I go down, it's just a rule. I'm going to stop at Butters, either coming in or leaving. His so, tra- his his food looks spectacular. It it's looks- it's very it's very traditional and true to like a South Texas homage to what barbecue. Yeah, that's is, what it looks like. You know? um, he's doing it very very clean. My buddy Adam and I uh, we love going there. Adam's Adam's there. He's Adam's actually in Corpus right now, and he's there at least every weekend. And what he'll do is he's we're trying to convince our friends in Corpus like y'all need to go to Mathis and experience barbecue representation because for the longest time corpus never had it mm-hmm. you know and adam's like you know what guys he's telling some other friends i'm gonna bring y'all back some tacos and y'all are gonna see what they're about so he'll go out there to mathis at you know 9 a.m on a saturday morning buy six or seven tacos go back to corpus and give them to his friends <laughs> that's cool you know and it's kind of like you know trying to spread the word and you know about butters you know to the coastal ben and you know he's yeah he's that- they're getting they, they, he gets recognition and i think i saw that like jimmy ho just recently went there like yeah, a few days yeah he was he was there like an hour after i was i missed oh, him. Was okay. i was like dude i just missed you i pulled up to butters and i texted andrew that was on the way and i pulled up and i go dude please tell me you have a beef for it because out one left i was like oh. yeah, it's mine so i ordered the beef for it and, and kevin i kid you not it was the meat on the bone was probably at least 13 inches it was <laughs> and i posted a picture of it on the website it's it's probably the biggest beef rib i've ever had and i mean i've had louis miller's i mean i louis is louis is number one of course but i mean the size of this thing was just insane it was incredible what? his barbecue's top notch he's he's dedicated and he's doing a lot for that area when it comes to barbecue we actually had a conversation um on saturday and he was like oh i'm nervous i'm nervous about the list i'm like man you've you're you're in everyone's list yeah, There's yeah. A list, you know the, the list that's coming out yeah yeah and he's like, I want, you know, I'm not sure if I'm gonna make it. There's so many barbecue joints. Jo- and I'm like, I'm like, dude, you're you're the underdog of yeah. Texas barbecue. You need to know that. Like, we were in Austin, and we pulled up to CM Smokehouse to go see Cade. Oh. And I think we had to go use the restroom. We, oh no, my wife had to go get Wi-Fi for her. She was doing a, a Zoom call for work, so we went to Cosmic because I knew they had Wi-Fi and coffee there. And Lauren Lewis is there, and I'm like, we might as well just eat Lauren. Yeah, Lewis, yeah, of course, yeah. Which is, which is, I mean, heaven on a plate. Yeah. I mean, the sliced barbacoa from them is, or the sliced cachetta beef chick is insane. Ah. Um, <laughs> and I, I finally tried their chili with no beans, and it's perfect. It's so good. Ah. Um, it's, and, it's like, yeah, like we went to Cosmic, and on accident, it's Louis, I mean, La, Leroy and Lewis is right there. It's yeah. Like, so yeah, but that, that day we were supposed to eat at, at CM Smokehouse. Daniel Vaughn went there, and then I went ah. to Leroy and Lewis. So I, I missed them by hair, but. But yeah, every time we're in Austin, I, I always, tr- I, I tell myself, you're going to try something different. You're going to go somewhere else. That's good. That's smart. And I end up at Lord and Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I want to try, I, I want to try, um, I think J and L's there now. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't been to style switch in a couple of years. Um, I need to get to Franklin's. I need to get, go check out. Um, there's so many now. There's... Have, you, have you been to Curlin ever? No. Yeah. I always hear, I, someone said, this is, I don't know if like someone will correct me that Curlin has some of the best ribs that around, but I, but Curlin, Curlin's like old school, like Curlin actually was when COVID started, they were almost going to shut down, but then they, oh, they wow. opened back up. And I think oh, they're that in, they're there in Austin. They're in Austin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They're like a, a trailer. Yeah. But they've been there for a long time. And I think he does, I want to think, and maybe I'll be corrected on this too, Kalachis or something too. Or, or oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I know smoking Z's down here uh, in the Galveston area. They oh yeah. That, that looks... And I've been, I've been missing them. I've, the other day uh, I said I was going to go to Smoking Z's and I drove to San Antonio and had Reese Bros. And I How was bad. Reese? I was, Reese was amazing, dude. They're, those guys, those guys are like, yeah. it's, it's unreal. Their brisket has something sweet. Huh. And I, I asked them afterwards and they just smiled and they're like, hell yeah. And I'm like, dude, I don't know what it was, but there's something sweet about that brisket. And at first I was like, what in the world? And then it just, it was just oh, so savory and different because traditional, you know, Texas barbecue is going to be salt and pepper. You know, yeah. and if, if you deviate from that, you're kind of, you know, walking the fence, you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're tiptoeing. And there is was salt and pepper. Don't get me wrong, but it was also something else. And I'm like, man, this is insane. And another thing that really hit it for me was they had a sausage and I wrote about it on the website. The sausage was incredible. Absolutely insane. I believe it was like a, it was a sp- more of a spicy sausage. It mm. wasn't, it was really, really good. And then their potato salad was more whipped. And it was not so chunky and, and, you know, like kind of big parts. It was whipped. It was fine. It was just the way I like it. And 
Yeah, I, can't, I can't wait to visit. I can't wait to talk to them. And it's funny because you're wearing a brick vault hat. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about barbecue. We're talking about barbecue. We, I took her with me. My wife was in Florida that weekend. And uh, we packed up the truck and we left Houston about 6 a.m. We drove straight to San Antonio. We got there and we're hanging out with like Richter Goods and the Pink Hill people and all them. They're super cool people. What they got going on. But yeah, I, I ordered I ordered a pound of brisket and she ate it all by herself. And I'm Good like, for her. She's, I mean, she's five years old. Damn. She's five years old. She was starving and, and she ate all the brisket and she's just doing her little happy dance. You know, that's when I know she loves it. So Reese Bros was amazing. You know, Did you go to 2M that day? No. So I've had, uh, I've had Isol's food at Brett's backyard last year. Brett's backyard party was like the first like COVID, like we're going to come out and have yeah, a I, re- I remember that. Like Fitzy even showed up. Like, yeah, ex- yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was, I took her photo there and Isao did Moyejas on corn tortillas. Oh. And out of everybody there, I think like Heritage was there from California. I mean, everybody was there. But the Moyejas from 2M, the pork belly burnt ends, buff, pork belly buffalo burnt ends from Hellberg, and whatever it was that Koi made was probably the best barbecue I've ever had. And not, not barbecue, just food in general. Wow. Every time I go to San Antonio, it's on a day that 2M's closed. So. <laughs> that's awesome. I've yet to check them off the list. Yeah, well, you will. I'm sure you will, and it's and, and I'm sure it'll be one of the best barbecue meals. And it yeah, seems like sure. everything that like it just feels like not that a lot of places don't pay attention, but every every single detail is paid attention to. Yeah, yeah, that big time. Good. And I, I think it's great that San Antonio is starting to get more of that. I, I think may, I mean, people might get mad at me for this, but I think the the barbecue flag is kind of changing now. I honestly feel like it was Houston for a while, then it was Austin, then it was back to Houston. I think, I think now it might be DFW. Oh yeah, I was gonna say Fort Worth. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I that think whole... it might be more Fort Worth DFW area, mm-hmm. and who knows? Maybe San Antonio's gonna carry that flag soon. Piggy Tans is there now. Uh, I did go to his spot. It's literally in the middle of hotels. Wow. And, I mean, Grant's got people in business in suits just he's, walking up by the. Hotels. How perfect is that for him? Like he's that's gonna, just... he's gonna kill it. Yeah, of course, yeah. It, so. But I'll I'll definitely check off 2M here soon. I'm hoping so. Yeah, this weekend it, we're actually. But, it, but but why not have amazing barbecue in every city? Like that's like why exactly, shouldn't because exactly. it makes it, sense. Texas is big enough to where everybody can you know get their little you know area going and and kind of stick their claim there. So yeah. Yeah, and thankful thankfully things are turning the corner. COVID wise, other people from other states like you you guys are all you guys are always from Texans are all traveling. <laughs> but uh, you know we're, we're all gonna be able to get out and actually come and visit and. I'd, yeah. I could, I'm glad you took the time. All the different ways people can get a hold of you and see all the stuff. You can find me at Mark Champion underscore TX, uh, Mark Champion TX.com, um, Howdy at Mark Champion TX.com. Get a hold of me there. I'll come shoot photos for you in your city. We can talk about it. If you got baseball, if you got barbecue, most likely I'm going to say yes. So. Now, what about like if you have a wedding? Would you shoot, would you shoot a wedding? Have you done um, that? <laughs> that sounds yeah. stressful. That sounds kind of stressful. But <laughs> I shot graduation photos this past weekend in Corpus, and it was my first grad grad photo session, and it went better than I thought. So, if I can conquer that, I might be able to conquer a wedding. So, I might call yeah. call Ben down the road and have Ben help me out. So, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, no, it's that's that's awesome, and it's funny when in this project that i'm working on i was I contacting some people they're like this weekend i've got a i've got a job but then i'll i'll get back to you maybe, it's just yeah like i, I think it was like a, a wedding job or something i'm glad we we're finally able to do this we've been talking about it for a while and yeah yeah and thanks. i can't wait to hang out with you in person and let's yeah. stay in contact i'll talk to you later, <laughs> later bud. bye